welcome back we come to the last part of our discussion on Karachi and the way it has been featured in some new books and Anwar Murad sahab you were talking nostalgically about Karachi and the number of bars it had and I also heard you mention about trams which something which you don't see in Karachi now. Yes, in fact, <clears throat> in our book, Karachi, Mega City of Our Times, we have a delightful picture of a tram trundling along its metal veins on Bandar Road. And uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a very nice picture and uh, brings back lots of memories. This tram used to travel from Empress Market to the Contonement and then from the Contonement all the way to Kemari. And we used to use it uh, for picnics when we used to go to Sandspit and Hawke's Bay. The other uh, thing that I noticed that disappeared completely were the nightclubs and I think this came along with Prohibition which That's was introduced in 1970, in 1977 um, after Mr. Bhutto had uh, introduced Prohibition and uh, the laws of gambling had also been uh, changed. So the nightclubs disappeared the bars disappeared, the trams disappeared, all the tram lines were uprooted and suddenly we were faced with a barrage of buses and road transport. So buses instead of nightclubs, is that the change in Karachi? Uh, buses instead of trams <laughs> <laughs> and coffee mm -hmm. bars instead of nightclubs, yes. And there were a few discos which um, cropped up, they mushroomed in various parts of Sada, but they have also disappeared. So there was a more organized sense of uh, addressing people's entertainment needs, if I may put it in that way, and that has disappeared over the years. That is true. But there's also been a um, complete F, um, springing up of um, fast food joints, uh, places like McDonald's and KFC, uh, they've sprouted up all over the city um, and um, some, of the doing, uh, some of them are doing quite well. So McDonald's instead of the city of sand, which is how T. E. Lawrence, uh, Lawrence of Arabia described yeah. it when he was in Karachi. Yes, Lawrence of Arabia is interesting from the point of view, um, the fact that he was lazing with the Arabs. Um, against the, he was a, a Welsh army officer and he was liaising with the Arabs against uh, the Turks, uh, much to the um, chagrin of uh, the Ali brothers and the Khilafat movement. Uh, they, of course, were siding with the Turks against the Allies. That's right. And he lived in Karachi for a brief while and he wrote some fascinating That's letters. True. That's true. Yeah. Right. Uh, this also brings us to uh, something which uh, Yasmin had mentioned earlier and that is about the difficulty in accessing records about Karachi's history. And I wonder if you want to comment on that and how what efforts are being made to preserve some of those records. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, I think the issue always has been in researching how do you find material. Right. Now, for most cities, you can get it quite easily. There is a lot of stuff that is around. Uh, people are might have written, but also source material is available. For Karachi, there's always been an issue. Where do you find the source material for it? And uh, uh, this last year, actually, as it happened, uh, my sister, who happened to be the deputy mayor, the Naib Nazim of the city of Karachi, she, in her KMC building, is the amazing, uh, you know, red sandstone building. What a beautiful building! Beautiful that building, is. one of the really highlights of the city of Karachi. Uh, in the clock tower, she was shown this whole mass of papers that were lying there. That were, it was suggested that they should be burnt or thrown away. And when she looked at them, they, she found that they were, they seemed to be old papers, and this, there were many old drawings. So she got in touch with me and with the Heritage Foundation. Said, "What can be done with that?" Well, anyway, two and a half years passed, but this last year, we were given the custody of those papers, and we got some funding from the Dutch government, and we are now uh, trying to preserve them. Uh, we've done about maybe 25% of it, but amazing uh, material is coming out of it. You Such know, as? You might want to talk about we, it. We've got drawings of many buildings uh, that were designed by architects that we'd never heard of. I mean, in my all my research, I'd never known about them, and that's all coming out. Uh, how were the uh, permissions given or not given, their ledgers, their all kinds of records going back to 1874. 
So that is an amazing uh, resource that now is now, you know, will be will become available because we are digitizing everything and we're making PDF files for everything. Oh, so this so is going to be available to a lot of people in that way. Absolutely. I feel that we need to put it at the disposal of researchers and scholars particularly, but rather than going through the original material, I think it will be the, the, you know, the uh, soft copies that will become available. Now, as an offshoot of that, I thought it would be good for us to develop now something called the Karachi Library, which would be a digital library. So the, right. the records will become our core collection because this is absolutely unique. You would not find them anywhere at all, but that becomes the core collection. And then I, w I would like to appeal to you as well as a writer, but also you know, to other writers and yourself, Anwar, uh, that you know, we need to really now try and put together in a digital form everything that has been written on Karachi whether it's the historical aspects or anything else. Mm -hmm. It is so difficult to find material that one of the novels which I've uh, included a piece from in this collection is a novel by somebody called P.C. Ren right. and uh, a novel set in Karachi oh in yeah. uh, 19, uh, 1903 and I had to trace a copy of that novel from the British Museum Library because I could not find a copy in Karachi. Right. So this is the kind of uh, shocking dearth of material. Yeah. Well, we'll be very willing to actually uh, yeah. do on a reciprocal basis, make an arrangement where we can give our unique material and get from other libraries what they have on Karachi. What about the India Library in, in, in London? Well, that's now all converted to British Library, of course, now. Yeah. But the India Office Library. India Office Library. Right, yeah. right. That is now, all the collection has now gone into British Library. And of course, there's a lot. the Sindh archives here in Karachi? Yes, there, that would have to. But, you know, somebody has got to see what is there. So at least we can start collecting what is easily available. And, and in different languages. In different languages also, of yes, course, yes, yes, absolutely. So I would appreciate any kind of help that can be given. It should be all about the communities of the city, different people who actually contributed to the city, any kind of images from any period, because we can have a whole historical record of images as to what it was before and you know, now. So it would be wonderful if, you know, uh, through your, through your uh, channel, we could appeal to people and try to see, and if you could act as our focal person on this and try to collect all the material. So thank you for being with us and focusing on these uh, interesting and different things about uh, Karachi. Thank you, Yasmin Lari, and thank you, My Anwar pleasure. Muraj. And I hope that uh, we can continue to benefit from our uh, discussions about Karachi and highlighting some of the things that uh, need to be said about this uh, very vibrant, exciting and con city with very many contradictions. Thank you very much. We hope to be back next week with further discussion on books and authors. Mm -hmm.